Hello guys, welcome back. In this lab, we are going to do process synchronization using mutex logs. So in the last lab, we have done process synchronization using semaphores. And in this one, we are going to use mutex logs to achieve the same goal. So here again, we are going to refer to the race condition problem itself and we are going to avoid the race condition or in other words, we are going to achieve process synchronization using mutex logs. So a few terms that we are going to use here in this program. The first one will be pthread underscore mutex underscore t. So this is the data type that we are going to use to declare a variable that we are going to use for locking or unlocking. Next is the function to initialize. So the function is pthread underscore mutex underscore init. So this is the function that we are going to initialize the variable that we have declared using pthread underscore mutex underscore t. Next, we are going to use two functions. First one is pthread underscore mutex underscore lock. And the second one is pthread underscore mutex underscore unlock. So whenever a thread wants to enter the critical section, it is going to acquire the lock on the variable. And whenever it is going to come out of the critical section, it is going to unlock the variable. Now let us look at the program. So here again, we are going to refer to the same program that we did in the race condition. Again, I'm going to provide you the link in the description part from where you can get this entire code. So you need not to type it, just copy paste from the given link. Now, if you have done the program on semaphores, it's going to be very simple for you to understand. All right. So the program flow is going to be that we are going to define a variable of the type pthread underscore mutex underscore t. Then we are going to initialize that variable. Then we are going to create two threads, thread one and thread two. Thread one is going to acquire the lock, then enter the critical section and then unlock. Again, thread two is first trying to acquire the lock, then it will enter the critical section and then again it will unlock. So coming back, the first thing we, are, we need a variable. So I'm taking a variable L, which is of the type pthread underscore mutex underscore lock. As usual, our shared variable will have the initial value as one. So what we are going to do is the final value after updation by thread one and thread two has to be one again, because thread one is going to increment this value by one. Thread two is going to decrement this value by one. So the ultimate value has to be one. Now, the first function that we are going to call is pthread underscore mutex underscore init, which is going to initialize the mutex lock. So it is going to take two parameters. First one is the address of the mutex lock variable that we have defined. So we have defined the variable L. So we are going to pass the address. The second parameter specifies the attributes for the mutex lock. If you want to use the default parameters, we will use the value null. So I'm passing here null because I'm not going to change the default attributes for the mutex. We can do it, but that will be going to be out of scope for this particular video. So for this particular video, what we are going to do is we are going to use the default attributes and hence I'm using the value as null. Okay. So two things in mutex underscore in it. First is the address of the variable and second is null because we are going to use the default attributes for the mutex log. Next, we are going to define two threads, thread one, thread two, create them, join them. And finally, check what is the value of the shared variable after modification by both the threads. Now, what the threads are going to do. So as usual, the thread is going to copy the global value, increment it, and then again, push it back into the global value. Now, thread one, before it starts, what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to print thread one trying to acquire lock. So this is going to tell me, okay, now thread one wants to enter the critical section. So it actually is trying to get the lock. Next, we are going to acquire the lock by using ethered underscore mutex underscore lock and the parameter will be the mutex variable. Okay. Now, if the thread is able to acquire this lock, 
it's going to go to the next step now since thread 1 is the first thread to run so it will be able to get the lock on the mutex variable right so thread 1 will be able to print this thread 1 acquired log and then it will start with the next statement x equal to share print this particular statement increment print again and then it is going to go to sleep now once the thread 1 goes to sleep thread 2 will start so what thread 2 is going to do is thread 2 again will print this thread 2 trying to acquire log now since thread 1 has already acquired the log when thread 2 runs this statement, it will not be able to acquire the lock and thread 2 will not be able to execute this. So what we are going to see on the screen is thread 2 trying to acquire lock and then it is going to start here. We will not see this statement immediately. Okay, We will see this statement only once the thread 2 is able to acquire the lock. Since the log is already with thread 1, this means that thread 2 will be able to acquire the log only when thread 1 releases that log. So, and when it is going to release, when it is going to issue pthread underscore mutex underscore unlock. So, what is going to happen is when thread 2 gets stuck here, ultimately the control is going to come back to thread 1 after it comes out of the sleep then thread1 is going to execute these two statements and finally it will execute pthread underscore mutex underscore unlock and thread1 release the lock so this is going to release the lock now once the lock is released this means whenever the control comes back to thread2 it will be able to acquire the lock on the variable l and once it acquires this lock it is going to execute these statements all right so what is happening with the use of locks is only one of the thread the one which is able to acquire the lock will be able to enter the critical section the second thread will have to wait until the first one releases the lock using p thread underscore mutex underscore unlock all right thus the use of the mutex variable will ensure that only one process is in the critical section at any given point of time now let's run this program now you can see thread 1 trying to acquire log it acquired the log thread 2 trying to acquire log but it never printed here thread 2 acquired the log why because it was not able to acquire the log so the control went back to thread 1 it, thread 1 reads the value of the shared variable updates to 2 value of the shared variable updated by thread 1 is 2 thread 1 releases the log and then thread 2 acquired log okay so the control has come back to thread 2 from this point here okay the next statement was able to execute only once the thread 1 released the lock. So this means that only thread 1 was able to update the value of the shared variable and only after it released the lock, thread 2 was able to update the value of the shared variable. So next thread 2 reads the value as 2, decrements is to 1 and finally the value is again 1. So I hope that this concept is clear, but if you still have any doubt, so just as a practice, what you do is you simply comment these two, okay? Comment this lock part, this unlock part. Again, here also you comment this lock part and the unlock part, you will get a different answer, okay? It will not be one because we will again be getting into the race condition part, okay? So just practice this out. If you have any doubt, you can message in the comment box and I will be very happy to help you out. So I hope that you have enjoyed this particular video and the concept of the use of mutex locks to achieve process synchronization is clear. So see you in the next lab. Till then, keep watching DexTutor and do not forget to subscribe and share.